I am continuing my video series about the Roman Empire. This is part 2 of the series. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous video, the link is in the description. I recommend watching it to get the full picture. Without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. In the previous episode, we explored Jernigius' intriguing take on the Roman Empire, and questioned its very existence. His book, Dear Realidad der Omission Reichs argues, that what we understand as the Roman Empire, might not have been the mighty civilization we believe it to be. Instead, it may have been a collection of various Celtic, Germanic, and Iberian societies that historians have mistakenly labeled as Roman. Gius raises significant questions about the practicality of Roman soldiers conquering vast territories, particularly without the necessary manpower or pre-existing infrastructure. He points out how the logistics of crossing the Alps with armies and supplies, all while building roads and cities, seem impossible. According to his research, the roads often attributed to the Romans, were likely built before their time by the Celts, who had advanced wagons, that required well-maintained roads. Gius also challenges the ethnic composition of Roman forces, noting that many of the soldiers and rulers, hailed from the very lands they were supposedly invading, such as France, Germany, and Britain. He suggests that these Romans might not have been invaders from Italy, but rather local warriors within a broader Celtic Germanic Empire. Further, the Roman Empire may not have been an empire at all, but rather a profession or military organization within Celtic society. The term Roman might have referred to soldiers or administrative officials stationed across Europe, not a people or nation. Jesus' theory reshapes our understanding of ancient history by blurring the lines between the Celts, Germans, and Romans, proposing that what we call Roman was more a continuation of pre-existing cultures rather than a distinct civilization. Etruscan Architecture even mainstream academia now agrees that some things previously assigned to the Roman Empire really belong to a more ancient people, called the Etruscans. Paintings, architecture, and sculptures, of which I learned in school were Roman, have meanwhile quietly been relabeled Etruscan. You'd think that this fact would be published worldwide, but most people don't know this, and mainstream media has given up any real journalism long ago. False knowledge, taught for centuries, takes a while to be updated. Thus, in the last 40 years, we've slowly shifted from teaching that the Romans founded Italy, to the Etruscans founding it. But, didn't the Romans build the famous waterways called aqueducts? And weren't these genius feats of engineering, helping people to use waterways instead of roads to transport goods and people? It amounts to transporting goods for free, no carrier needed. That's what was officially taught in school, but there is a growing body of evidence that aqueducts were also built by the Etruscans. Meanwhile, there is also evidence that they built waterways not only in Italy, but all over Europe. Officialdom, Wikipedia, still says that aqueducts were built by the Romans, but I expect the info to be updated in the coming years. Meanwhile, we even have evidence of the Assyrians and Mayans building aqueducts. If Roman architecture was built by the Greeks and Etruscans, where does that leave the Romans? Perhaps it leaves them in the fictional universes dreamed up by Hollywood. Many people may also be surprised to learn that most of the archaeological discoveries of Roman artifacts weren't dug up in Italy, the supposed center of the empire. But were then. In France and Germany. When archaeologists dig up an item, they often lazily assign it to the same people and time period as similar looking items dug up in the past. In this way, if there was an error, all the subsequent similar items are erroneously assigned to wrong places and times. All roads lead to Rome. The city we know today as Rome wasn't even called Rome in ancient times. It was called Palladium. The word palate means Kai in Etruscan and palace in Greek. According to Greek history, the founder of Palladium was King Euandros, who also invented the Latin language to be used by elites, not understood by commoners. He and the Pelasgians, or Greeks, traveled to Italy and founded the town. Greek history says that Euandros expanded his kingdom throughout all of Italy. Originally he had to pay the Etruscans who lived there for using the land. But later, after controlling the country, he no longer had to pay them. Rome was not called Rome, but many cities across Europe were called Rome. 
The German cities, Trier, Landsberg, Mainz, Bamberg and Aachen for example, were all once called Rome, because they were military forts. There's even a town in Sweden on the island of Gotland that is still called Rome today. There is a small city in Germany called Landsberg. On its old seal, or flag, it is called Roma. Aachen is a city in Germany, formerly Netherlands and Belgium. It was called Roma Renovata, which probably means Rome renewed. Its old city seal says Romanorum. The German city of Mainz has on its city flag Romaine. How is it that all these places were called Rome? One could argue that these titles denoted their belonging to the Roman Empire, but Gia says it is because Rome simply denotes military bases. Otherwise thousands of other towns would also have to be denoted as being part of the empire. The name of Constantinople, formerly Byzantium, today Istanbul, was Nova Roma. Carthage was called the African Rome. There's an entire country called Rome, it's Romania. All kinds of places were called Rome, but just not the place today known as Rome. Today's city of Rome wasn't even called so 1000 years after Christ. It was a small Greek village of 10 acres. It was only made the capital of Italy in 1870, before that, Milano was the capital. In 1337, the writer Francesco Petrarca called the area around Rome a place full of ruins. Perhaps it's no coincidence that Roman history was mostly written down not in Latin, but in Greek. The city of Trier, Germany, still exists today. It was once called Belgica Roma, or Belgian Rome. According to Gius, this and not today's Rome is the oldest known Roman city. It is mentioned in writings dating back to the year 250, but the city is even older than that. There are Caesars that lived in a palace in the town of Cannes, a suburb of Trier, from which Britannia, Gallia and Germania were ruled. The old town hall of Trier has an inscription from 1684, in golden letters. Rome Trier has stood for 3000 years, may its peace last forever. If Rome Trier stood for 3000 years before 1684, it would mean it existed in 1316 BC. But the Roman Empire was supposed to have been founded in 27 BC, more than a thousand years later. This is the Porta Nigra, the oldest building in Trier. If you find it interesting, I'll continue in part 3.